book of John, the author was introduced as the only disciple present at the crucifixion who loved Jesus with agape or divine love and who was given the care of the mother of Jesus. After the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, John the Beloved was exiled by Rome to the island of Patmos where he received a revelation of Jesus and the eternal states. Finally, he was returned to Ephesus, and there he died a natural death in his 90s. But the very last words that John the Beloved said to all the followers of Jesus, he said, love one another, little children. The early church continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread and praising God and giving thanks. So we are going to do the very same today because the Lord says, whenever you meet and come together, celebrate in the memory of what I've given for you, the communion. And we will do that in just a moment. So Father, we just say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together with those followers, even 2,000 years later. But we believe with all of our heart and soul that you are the true and one and living God, the only begotten Son of the Father. And we come together today to continue our study in the book of John. We're going to study the first chapter on this day, but before we do, we will take communion and celebrate your life. So before the Lord Jesus was crucified, it is written in 1 Corinthians, he said, you take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me, and you may partake of this communion. Likewise, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the New Testament, of my blood, which was shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we give praise to you again, Lord, for this communion, for this relationship, for the fact that you have allowed us to go boldly through the veil of the temple into the very holy of holies, where the Father's very presence is. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us today. Yes, Lord, thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In chapter one, and the very first chapter that begins the divine revelation of the Lord Jesus, because John wrote the book of John, his book, the book of John, was written that would explain and reveal the divinity of Jesus. In the hypostatic union, there is the divinity and there is the humanity. John specifically wrote about the divine. And so we begin in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was present originally with God, and all things were made by him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. He came into the world, and the world received him not. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness never overpowered it or put it out or could absorb it or extinguish it. For in the beginning implies that it was preceding time and the light could not be put out. The power of the creative word of God when he said, let there be light, is forever and eternal from the eternal and marvelous God who has no beginning and no end for he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. And again, in the beginning implies preceding time. And in John 17, 5, Jesus cries out to his Abba Father and he said, and now Father, glorify thou me. Glorify me with thine own self, with the glory that I had with thee before the world began. Was implies in the imperfect tense, it means continuous existence or coming into being. The word, Hebrews 1 and 2, confirms 
God has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and by whom he also has made the worlds. In Revelation 1 and 8, it declares, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning and I am the end. Heavens is the plural, and agenito is that word in the Greek, which means created from absolutely nothing. And that specific word is used. This word is in the aortist tense, and it means already done at a specific time and a specific point in time. Now, as students of the word, we can contemplate why the word was written in this way. Were there other creations before this world? Well, we don't know. But the way in which our scripture is established says so much for those that are sincere students to try to go into the original meaning of each and every word. I'm not a theologian, but I've done a little bit of this. And it excites me to think that even as it was written, that the earth was without form and void. It implies, as in Genesis 1-2, that there were other creations even before this one. Again, I don't know. And I'm not going to speculate. But we know that the Father has given us one body, the Father of whom all things are created, in him one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we all have eternal life through his precious blood that was shed for us. The powerful scripture in Colossians 1, 16, makes this very clear. For by him were all things created that are, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. He is the firstborn. And he is the head of the body of the church, who in the very beginning, he has preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness of the Godhead dwell. And again, the blood of the cross is what makes this possible for us as believers. Ephesians 3 and 9 adds, And he made all men to see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of all the worlds has been hid in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus. Going back into the book of John, John 1, verse 14, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, in this very first chapter, John introduces another John, and he is John, the forerunner. He is John the Baptist. He comes up in this first chapter, and he is the cousin of Jesus. And when Mary, the mother of Jesus, was visiting Elizabeth, her cousin, the very babe in the womb of Jesus jumped for joy when he came into the presence of Jesus, still in the womb, an amazing baptism of the Holy Spirit by the Lamb of God. Fast forward 30 years, and we see Jesus at the beginning of his earthly ministry, encountering John the Baptist at the River Jordan, and behold, the Lamb of God. And so we see the Lamb of God, who is Jesus, and the Father who speaks from heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the dove comes and lights upon the shoulder of Jesus. And John the Baptist had been given a message from the heavens that when he saw a man coming to the river to be baptized, and when he saw a dove land upon him, he would know that this truly is the Son of God. This is recorded for you in the book of John, the first chapter that you will be studying. Continuing on in chapter 1, there are the words where Jesus says the two men were looking on, and this was Peter and Andrew, the first disciples that were chosen. And he said to them, he said, follow me. And so 
not only did they follow Jesus, but they went to tell someone else. And his name was Nathaniel. And you'll read all about Nathaniel. And Jesus had a word for him because in his omniscient foreknowledge of each and every one of us, he saw Nathaniel under the fig tree and he said, I saw you under the fig tree with angels ascending and descending. And Nathaniel said, in his you know, first encounter, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then finally, he says, follow me as well. And so we know that Jesus made an impact that day, the very first day that he met and called his disciples. And he said, follow me. And to this very day, we see that he calls each and every one of us to follow him. And in the name of Jesus, we say, thank you, Father, that you have still called us out of our humble occupations, whether it be fishermen or housewives or just workers or whoever we are, 2,000 years later, you come along and you say, follow me. And I say thank you for listening.